today I'm actually going to be replacing my headlights with new ones. Let's just put it this way that I am actually upgrading an upgrade. That kind of sounds redundant, but yeah, that's what I'm actually doing. Uh, it, actually, my Forerunner right now is actually using LED headlights, but the only problem is that this side is not lighting up. Uh, and I know what you're thinking, you probably just have a loose connection or something like that, but um, actually that's not the case. The fact that this one actually does light up, but it's not like really glowing like on that side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna replace both headlights and then um, go from there. So I got all the tools that I need. Um, I have a, just in case I have a socket, uh, just in case if I need it, I have a socket wrench with a extension and a 10 millimeter socket bit and also the headlight assembly itself and also a screwdriver. The reason why I'm gonna be using a screwdriver is because my headlights are adjustable. So if when I put the lights into the car and the headlights are not in perfect alignment from for low beam and high beam, I can always adjust that by using a screwdriver. The car that I'm actually using for this application is a 1995 well, essentially a second generation Toyota 4Runner. This one has the V6 engine, the 3VZE, or known to the Toyota enthusiast as three points slow. 4Runner. For those who own the earlier model of the, of the second generation 4Runner, which is the one from 1990 to 1991, this application might be very similar as the only thing different on it is the front end. As you can probably hear, you can hear the fan doing its job. These are the, or, the original LED headlights that I installed. They're supposed to make uh, some fan noises to ensure you that the um, thing is actually working. And now it's, it's a little bit hard to see, but the headlight is actually on, on the driver's side. But if you look on the passenger side, nothing. But you can hear that fan is really struggling. So, I want to go ahead and replace it. This might be a little bit different if you guys have the earlier model, second generation 4Runners, but generally speaking, there's usually a bolt over here that's holding onto this uh, housing here, which goes to the intake. So, what you want to do is you want to remove this bolt and possibly remove this one thankfully that these bolts that you're gonna try to remove are 10 millimeter bolts however you have to take the battery out and, and that requires a 12 millimeter bolt I'm gonna go ahead and start off by removing this battery yeah I'm gonna remove the the sock the, the connections first and I'll go ahead and remove this bracket over here that's holding it in place requires a 10 millimeter bolt and yeah um, but in this case the positive terminal on my truck is actually using a bigger size bolt but generally speaking usually these connections are usually 10 millimeter bolts be sure to take off ground first before you remove power Dropped. Right there. This thing dropped. Okay. All wires are, all connections are now disconnected. Now there are two bolts over here that you just need to remove. Both using a 12 millimeter socket. Here it is, 
out of the out of its engine bay. It's actually held down by a hook, which goes onto the sheet metal of the vehicle. Now we can take the battery off. Now the passenger side actually has um, this is a windshield washer reservoir in the way. So go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter socket and get it out. So now, this thing could be moved. Just be careful if there's any sort of any wiring that you don't want to break. Okay. You don't have to take it all the way out because you actually have enough space over here to actually get the um, assembly out. So the rinse, the winds, the windshield wiper, windshield washer fluid I, reservoir, I should say is now out of the way you can have access to this headlight over here and as you can see it's actually held down by this little ring you just gotta unscrew that just a bit and then it just pulls out like that also make sure to disconnect the connection hard for me to do it here's the old headlight assembly yep Judging by the fact that this thing, yeah, this thing has been, looks like it wasn't submerged, but um, it, it did got a little wet here at some point. So yeah, caused the fan to kind of struggle to work properly. So yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and put the new one in. Just like if you're just gonna be replacing halogen bulbs on your 4Runner or whatever, or any car you pretty much own, it's always nice to actually do a little bit of comparing to make sure that the connections are right. As you can see, these are correct. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, into the car. So um, this, uh, this piece right here actually comes with the assembly. What you're gonna do is, it's gonna be like that. All you need to do is just twist it and to make sure it's locked. And then to remove it, you just gotta do the same thing, just twist it and it'll come off. So, this goes in, I just wanna see how this light actually goes in when I do put this back in. So this this ring will, um, locks the headlight bulb itself onto the vehicle. So, let's see if I'm actually at the right one. Okay, that's the right side. Okay. So that means this will go here so here's the headlight assembly, and we'll go something like that. Then this section, just this section right here, twist on. Then you just twist it. Now it's locked. Now it's locked in place. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the car. Now, unfortunately, there's actually no way that I can actually show you this because this is actually how high my tripod can actually go. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna just install this back into the headlight assembly and then just screw it back in, then connect it, and then do the same thing on the other side, and you're pretty much done. Okay, so the light is now attached. As you can see, the connection is in here. And over there, I know you, you can barely see it, it's now onto the headlight assembly. Just give it a little wiggle, just make sure it doesn't fall off. Once you get that done, you're pretty much good. On second thought, while I was actually reassembling the passenger side headlight, you don't really need to take this thing out. That's why if you take the battery out, it's just right there. You can see my hand right there. You can just easily take it out and in if you want to. Hmm. Okay, that's good. But this side you have to. I'm already done on that side already. Now I need to go ahead and take off this coolant reservoir 
which is held down by this bolt. And also this section where it holds the intake housing. Okay, so I got the, um, the uh, this headlight out, which is on the sitting over here. Just gotta just, just move this back just like that. It's not gonna really gonna hurt anything. Uh, so I got that one out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one in. Pretty much the same process as what you've done over here. You just essentially uh, grab this. Actually, no. All you gotta do is just do this. Do it like this. Then this goes next. Then you just put this onto the headlight assembly and then just use this to screw it in. And then there you go. That's all you gotta do. Okay. The new bulb is installed. I'm gonna go ahead. I don't know, it's kind of glary, but um, new bulb is installed and now connected. I'm gonna go ahead and close this housing up and then I'll be on my way. And just go put back that 10 millimeter bolt that you just took out. And then just put this put this um, coolant reservoir back onto its uh, mounting and then you should be done. Now from here, you can go ahead and reconnect the battery. Well, first of all, got to put this thing on. There's actually a hole right over here, right underneath, right underneath here just in, in the engine bay. And this is where this hook will hook onto. And you'll see what I mean. All you just got to do is just put that hook right in there, actually. Now, now I can go ahead and put it in there. All right, there we go. And now, it's gonna tighten this thing real quick. At least I know it doesn't fall fall off because this thing likes to flop around. Okay, there we go. And now from here, just grab a 10 millimeter socket. Just go ahead and tighten her up. Once you're done with that, go ahead and reconnect your connect your terminals. You should be done. Then what you need to do, just turn on the car and uh, check your check your work. See if it works. And then uh, if your headlights kind of like go a little bit out of the place, your job is to not to try to, is try not to blind the person in front of you because LEDs are plenty bright. So that's why I mentioned earlier to use actually a screwdriver because there's actually screws over here uh, for adjustment for the headlights. So once you do that, you can to your desired need, then you're ready to go. Just at the local auto zone because this is pretty much the only easy way that I can actually reference off my my headlight section. Just aiming at that. Just trying to aim the light more on that line right there you see.
and this one actually controls the light going this way or that way. All right, I'm not gonna bore you guys out just for doing this, so. Talk to you guys again soon, hope you guys enjoyed.